Hello, my name is Joshua Rosenberg. I'm a UK-based legal journalist, and I've been covering this case really since the start. Um, I appreciate that you're ultimately suggesting that this should lead to the withdrawal of the application for extradition. But in the meantime, are you alleging that there's any breach of English law? And are you saying that this should have any impact on the proceedings in England and Wales at the moment? This is Richard Roth. I can answer that. We are alleging that it is a breach of the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Um, Bob, you can chime in as well. Uh, any U.S. citizen, whether they're in the country or not, is entitled to, not, to, to the search and seizure clause, to not be searched or have their information seized. So it is specific to the U.S. Constitution and not to British law. But I would imagine that British law has something parallel. But this lawsuit is in the U.S. It is in New York. It is on behalf of U.S. citizens, and it is for a violation of the U.S. Constitution. So it's not going to have any impact on the current proceedings in the United Kingdom unless you persuade the U.S. government to withdraw the extradition request. Bob, I think that's fair. Certainly, that's a question that could be better answered by the, the attorneys representing Mr. Assange in the extradition proceeding. But this particular case is seeking relief in the U.S. courts for violation of U.S. constitutional rights. It may very well have an effect legally in the U.K., but that's something you should pose to his attorneys in that proceeding. I think Deborah would like to comment on that as well. I just had a brief, wanted to make the point that one of the um, components of whether extradition is appropriate is whether Mr. Assange is likely to have a fair trial in the U.S., and this is just one of many indications that that's not in fact the case. So I would imagine it the behavior should, certainly should have an impact.